So there are many students who applied everywhere or applied wherever they could pay for, and they could not get any offers. So what would be your advice for them? For example, should they continue next year? Do they have a better shot at it? Or maybe they should reevaluate what really matters to them? Do they really need that PhD? What, what's your take on this? I would work in the field for a year, um, either in, uh, it could be in an academic lab, but not a degree granting track. It could be at a company, it could be at a startup or established company. It could be in government and policy um, at the state or, gov or, or federal level or even municipal level. Um, yeah, work, work for a year, try to learn a little bit more about how your interests fit into the wider world. That's good from the standpoint of your own professional development and also uh, to give you time. Maybe there are papers that are a paper that you had from your undergraduate work that's not out yet. And when that comes out, it will increase the chances of getting a, uh, you know, an acceptance. It also might change your career trajectory. You may decide that you want to do the thing that you did for that one year professionally. And maybe you want to, instead of doing a PhD in chemistry, you want to do uh, uh, an MS in public policy or public health, or you want to do a law degree or a business degree or something. You, um, if you really are sure that you want to do a PhD and you want to try extra hard, the best way to get access to a PhD program is through the master's program. So if you apply as a master's student, or maybe if you get rejected, you can say, hey, you have a master's degree program. Can I, I'll be a paying customer for that. Um, you know, I'll apply for TA ships, but you don't, I'm not, my acceptance is not going to be, my attendance is not going to be dependent on the, on that. We would take you either Rochester or UCSD would have taken that person in an instant if they wanted to pay for a master's. And then if they do a good job in a research lab, um, then that position can be upgraded from MS to PhD. Now, it did cost you some time, uh, it, or I mean, it did cost you some money, but your coursework is, your graduate coursework is being done at the place that you ultimately want to matriculate as a PhD student, so you won't have to retake it. Um, it shows an immense amount of fortitude and commitment that you're willing to take out a loan to do the MS program. And the admissions to, you know, anywhere except like a top five school maybe for the master's program are well, well over 50% um, because master's programs make a lot of money. and It's kind of, we compete hard for master's students. I know a number of students who had industry experience, extensive industry experience. So they came back for a PhD. So would that be also a plausible route to um, you know, getting into the program? Yeah, I would say that that's sort of track one of the two track. You know, it's not a one year in industry, but it could be 10 years. Uh, and then I think those are the types of people who tend to do really well in PhD programs. They have the shortest route to PhD because their prefrontal cortices are more well-formed. <laughs> They're better at making more difficult decisions. They have an idea of what they want to do with their degree. Uh, and so those, those students to me have a great advantage. In fact, it took more than, it took 10 years in my lab for me to be the oldest member of my lab. I always had older students. Um, my first graduate student, Adam Prince, who's now a professor of chemical and environmental engineering at University of Arizona. He was uh, a year older than me, Alex Zaretsky, who founded a company doing uh, graphene synthesis um, and applications of various, you know, electronic and, and proteomic uh, sensor chips. He was two years older than me. Um, I hired a graduate student, Mickey Finn, who is, who was like eight years older than me. He spent time being a 
sound technician for kind of B-list traveling rock and metal bands. And so he, he joined, you know, very fearless about working with equipment. And so I, I've had, uh, veterans of the military in my band or band <laughs> talking about B-list bands. I'm getting ahead of myself. In many ways, my lab has been a lot like a band no. <laughs> um, uh, who was a uh, veteran of the Navy. That was Daniel Rodriguez. And, you know, he's doing very well for himself in industry now. So there could be a lot of career trajectories that um, could be very beneficial in some way. But, well, my my view is that many students... From what my I receive a lot of these messages from students who say, I've been trying to get into a PhD for three, four, five years, every single year trying really hard and I couldn't. And what I normally say is that it like the PhD is if if you're over focusing on that, then you're losing on other parts of your career. And so maybe moving out, trying to find a way around and then trying yourself out and some other roles and then coming back for tech um in yeah. some way could work better than trying to really narrowly focus on getting that admission for years and years i think it depends on what your other options are if you are earning a hundred thousand dollars a year in industry with a bachelor's or a master's degree i think you're doing really well it would be a very tough sell to earn thirty five thousand dollars for five years as a phd student if you're already you know, earning that cash. Why don't you, you know, live kind of below your means and invest it and do some other exciting things, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, the There's a huge opportunity cost to, to doing a PhD. Um, and I certainly wouldn't encourage everyone to do it. I think in many cases, we are we're overtraining people certainly in in some fields like physics and basic biology um there are they're underpaid in industry there aren't that many jobs um a lot of those individuals have to work in other fields and uh, or do an mba in order to become uh, to rebrand themselves and so I think we're doing a lot of people a, a, a disservice by, um, you know, encouraging you know, every, every student with research experience or who's shown some facility in the lab to do a PhD. Not that we're, not that we're doing that with every student, but there is a, there is a, there is a, a trend. A trend. Yes, sure. Sure. I fully agree. I fully agree. Some of the basic sciences are amazing for your brain development, but they're not so good for a career development in certain right. areas yeah 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 the the offshoots of scientific research funding are trained individuals of course the society views it as because they don't know how academia works that it's results that could be useful for cancer therapies and alternative energy and you know new military and intelligence hardware and stuff and that's all true but where is the equity actually going? It's in human capital. And those individuals have to have something to do after. And if you're oversupplying the human capital, then the people who do get jobs are underpaid. And there are a lot of people who are not working in the field. <laughs>